Welcome to our discussion section on managing data locally for long-term sustainability. Our discussion leader is Christy Thomas. She's the head of data management services at the University of Chicago Library, and she's been involved in ongoing development of the open source library system, Kuali Ole. And she's also an active participant in the Folio Library Services Platform community as part of the Metadata Management Special Interest Group and the Data Migration Working Group. And she's a member of the Share VDE Transformation Council. She's going to start with some framing comments and then lead the discussion. And we have until 5.15. And then directly after this um, is our reception on the same floor. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for um, for joining um, me today in this conversation. Um, I wanted to start off with a little bit of context um, about my institution and why I proposed this as a discussion topic for this conference. Um, so at the University of Chicago Library, we've been involved in a couple of initiatives over the last few years. Um, I've listed them here. Um, one you may have heard about late, earlier today or you may have already known about it, is the Share for Cool Discovered Environment project. And one aspect of that project is services convert your MARC data to good frame data. So we've been involved in that project since the beginning, and um, I guess it's been about a year and a half ago now. We received our um, 7.8 million bids that we sent them back as over 1 billion triples. And we didn't know what to do with that. Um, we actually spun up a different instance of our Mark Logic triple store. We loaded them into the triple store, but still, um, that's how we're managing those currently. Um, while we're thinking about what do we do with this large um, data set of triples, um, we also started another linked data project. This was more of a boutique project. Um, we have a Middle Eastern photographic archive. It's got about 500 um, images in it. And we decided that we were going to catalog them uh, as uh, um, NVRA core and publish it as linked open data. We didn't really have a mechanism to do this, so we co-opted another local system that we had created to catalog according to the VRA core content standards. And then we exported the data and then we converted it um, to linked open data that way. We also have been involved in um, the Folio project. And um, where does it have, so actually the Folio project is a little bit, um, it takes us off on a different tangent. So to, to talk about these earlier two projects, we're managing them both in very boutique ways, alongside and really outside of our um, managing our large um, bibliographic store of marked data. And we want to get away from that. Every time we want to start a new initiative, we have to put time and energy into thinking about infrastructure and how we're going to support that. And it's always unique to that project. So we've been involved in Folio um, since the beginning. I've personally been involved since December of 2016. Um, and the Folio project from the beginning was always intended to be a format agnostic um, platform when dealing with bibliographic metadata. Um, we're coming up on being able to implement Folio um, on the first version soon. And to be honest with you, right now, it is Mark's, <laughs> well, so, I don't want to say Mark-centric. Um, the first format that Folio is going to be able to handle um, in terms of bibliographic data is going to be Mark, because we all have a lot of um, Mark, Mark data. But where we are in the process, as we're nearing the completion of V1, and we've had this um, intention all along to make sure that Folio could truly be uh, format and form agnostic with the metadata is to take a step back and look at our data model in Folio and start listing the functional requirements for what would it be like, for instance, if we needed to run our 
administrative ILS functions, and we didn't have any marked data. All we had were some the frame or other length of the data type of RDF entities. What would that look like? And so that is actually the stage we're at right now um, in the project. And so um, I, I, I really wanted to have this discussion because I wanted to learn um, from the community. I know that my experiences over the last couple of years um, managing the data in, in you know, our, um, our local catalog, we use Koali OA, um, and managing the data that we're getting out of the um, Share VDE um, Bibliographic Record Conversion Project and the Boutique Project, which really was, um, at my institution, our first foray into cataloging um, with the intention of publishing the data um, as linked data. Um, what is it that we would need in a library system to, one, be able to manage metadata regardless of what format the metadata is in, and two, be able to um, administer our collections, which is what we have traditionally done via our ILS, and that is run off of data that's provided from the MARC. What would that look like if it came from metadata that isn't So I proposed um, a couple of questions. I have some more questions um, if, if, we, if we need them. And I'm actually okay. I wanted to share my intentions um, in, in terms of um, suggesting um, this discussion. But I'm okay if we go in a completely different direction. So um, we can start off with the top question. And if, if organically the conversation goes somewhere else, um, that's great. Or if you um, want to take a moment and read the questions, and there are preferences for starting um, elsewhere in my list mm -hmm. of very packed questions, I will admit. I don't think any, oh no, the first one is just a single question. Oh, as is the last one. It's only the second one that's a little packed. Um, so if you want to take a couple minutes and read the questions, subscribers to our bibliographic records, we would certainly continue to distribute MARC records until, much like the Library of Congress, until there isn't a demand for them or there isn't so much of a demand for them. Um, so, but we're a little different than many other libraries in that regard. that functions or an LSP that functions 
functions like our current ILS, but that doesn't have more data. It's just got like some RDF instances. Right, right, right. In, right. In, the, in, a, in, a, in the movement toward only RDF, how, how do you, in that gray area that we're not even in yet quite, mm -hmm. how, do, how are we going to operate in terms of yeah. that whole life cycle of technical services work? some sort of common model for discovery systems of any kind that you can use and represent the items no matter where they come from. Um, but I think you know, to answer about our institution, we also um, actually might be useful to see that is how many people are using a link data editor at their institutions currently. Because um, that might be causing a problem to discuss as much. Um, we don't, mm -hmm. but So are you just transforming metadata as it goes between the two systems? Or are they just in the same form? Are they in mods They're in the first place? Yeah, They're transforming them? Yeah. OK. Actually, how do you do uh, authority <laughs> control? Well, so if you saw my presentation in the uh, Discovery 1 session, I think uh, we gave up on authorities due to resource problems. So actually kind of where we're going with Folio to give a sneak peek. And I actually brought some diagrams of the Folio infrastructure model and the data model in case we decide to reference them um, at some point in talking about how the approach that we are working with. That's what I was going to Okay. Like, oh, I think oh, I'm do getting ahead of you bring up a slide that you can talk about? No, that's fine. I was just gonna, I was going to say we don't currently, but we would we look forward to or hope right. to in, uh, as Folio develops. But then I saw Folio further down, so I was like, oh, wait, something. Right. Well, you know, one of the big reasons um, that I proposed this was as we're thinking about um, Folio and the development of Folio. What are the requirements that we should be um, thinking of and um, I know that we each have our own unique um, environments, so I wanted to hear from people in different, you know, environments than than the one I'm currently in. Uh huh. Um, we are using Expertise Alma at University of Pennsylvania, so they have a. They cannot do like a development side by side, so they continue with Mac, and they can have. think that there's a, a lot of overlap um, there where we where um, you know we think or at least I it is so hard to stop thinking in terms of records and start thinking in terms of, of entities and what does it mean when some of those entities are external and some of those entities are internal and what is the data that you need to represent um, either as an entity or in some other form in your local system to provide some function like, I need to be able to order a record. Um, how does that, how, do, how does that, you know, operate? That's a rhetorical question, I don't know the answer yet. 
maybe there's a third option that I haven't been creative and I'm, my mind isn't expansive enough to, to come up with. So if you have a third option, throw it in there. But I would like to hear what people think about those two options. Well, I do have to say that the 2020 date is uh, is more about um, our planned migration to Folio and not necessarily our aspirational date for being able to uh, power Folio off of you know different entities. I, yeah. If you can run like already on the market in the same discovery, I would love for you to do that because I would love to see what your users think of the different like what you're getting in and out of both things and whether you have this like the business data like what kind of Selfishly, I would love for you to do both and provide feedback on that because it would, I think, for a lot of people, provide incentives one way or the other and lead to results and stuff. So you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That's actually. I mean, I, I think that that's a. I, that's a really. I think that that provides a, an interesting opportunity to. It's a moment in time where we have an opportunity to collect that type of feedback. I think that we're thinking of a hybrid environment. We manage our mark as mark and our bib frame as bib frame and our ILS doesn't care what the data is or our discovery system doesn't care what the data is. For us, it is a practical consideration. We wanna be able to move forward without having to wait until the moment that you flip the switch and all of your workflows are bib frame ready, right? That's gonna take a long time. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking about the authority control question, well, and I think that um, it's not in my in my mind. So that caveat, um, it's not going to be a system. I don't think the future is going to hold for us the moment when we decide that authorities and authorized data and structured data is no longer needed. But the type of authority maintenance and the authority services that we tend will tend toward will just be so very different. So we still want to be able to have authority data, ISNIs and uh, NACO records and um, all those well-formed, well-trusted data sites, but we won't have to build mark authorities anymore. I mean, not stopping in 2020, mind you, but the intellectual work to create those data won't go away, in my opinion. It will just evolve into a different state where we're linking out to those um, trusted sources, and we won't have to import them into our into our silos any longer to enable enhanced discovery and serendipitous research uh, discoveries. How do you compare that with the RDF or what Nancy was saying, uh, the three A's? Anyone can say anything about anything. Not just not opinion. For authority data, for authorized. For RDF, well, so you can explain it. Too. So, I mean, so I'll just want to say yes. Anyway. Yeah. You choose the sources that you trust. So, um, thank you for that comment. I think Lawrence is going to leapfrog authorities, and we'll just go directly to the beautiful new future. I think that's a good plan, right? I've got this diagram. <laughs>
have no place there. Well, I think all librarians, anybody who's cataloged or definitely has a place in what I'm going to refer to now as a new future of core authority, and that is to create those data to make sure that the entities that we want to link to and describe are extant in our trusted sources. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. talking about in um, the LD for Peace space a little bit um, mm -hmm. is less the management of MARC next to RDF, but what is the actual management of RDF um, in a way that we, it, because that is when we're talking about something like cooperative cataloging or sharing of entities across institutional zones, um, we now go into a place where you're not, you may or may not be pulling data locally and right, like we do with records. Right. Um, so how do you, what does that management look like when you may or may not actually have a clone of data locally or it might live in the world and then questions around management of that transpire because a lot of our practices for metadata management and metadata operations rely on us owning data locally. Um, so there's been, we've, we've sort of hit up against a couple of questions like that. We haven't actually but we've been talking about them. Uh -huh. when, when I, we ask, oh, I talk about those kinds of things. In my institution, um, with our colleagues across the hall, well, they're a different campus, the IT folks, um, they, 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 the gut reaction seems to be, well, we're going to have to cache a lot of it for responsive, responsiveness to the patrons. So there will still be metadata maintenance or management in that, in that vein if they're right, that we're going to not be able to just Link up to the in all cases. And you know, that's actually, you know, where I was thinking um, in terms of your earlier question um, about how do we order something if we don't have a record for it? It is um, can we not just point to something and then mine whatever data we need to pull in so that, you know, the system knows what you're ordering? Um, yeah, and maybe our systems of records are just off site for those kinds of right. things. Um, well, I mean, work. There, there, maybe there's a local system record that is just derived from some complicated... Oh, some vendor system. Right. Or... Yeah. Okay. Maybe that too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea how this is functionally going to work yet. Oh, the yet implies that I'm going to know. <laughs> <laughs> Which might happen. 
Yes. And then I just have to do this first. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, you first and then sorry. Is that going to be now your integrated library system? What do you currently use? Uh, Qualio Lay. It's an open source system. What if they don't have your circulation and acquisitions and all those other modules ready to go by July 2020? Then we decide whether or not to do a partial implementation or to defer for a year. I just asked because at ACRL, have yeah. they seem to be not ready to commit to when was going to go into, you know, be available for everyone. Right. Well, I mean, I think that it, you know, being ready is probably different for each institution. I believe that the first institution is going live in um, the summer. Mm -hmm. um, Chalmers um, and Sweden. Sweden, but they have a very... E-centric yeah. um, collection. Thank you. 
to get more juries who will get will have more local different uh, local theaters that we manage, that we control, that we maintain, and that, uh, so that we 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 make sure we have a high level of quality, that we set up that quality, and the jury uh, when you click on them, they want to we're not we're not going to release on external data that we don't know if they have metrics or qualities, if it's going to be available, and, and when it's going to be available. So, so manage your own system like we used to do. Which is the opposite task. We're looking out to all trusted, uh, trusted sources of data for your eyes, at ID to LLC, and places like the app. We have a list of external linked data targets, and that's what we're putting in there. Right now, they're reloading our entire database while I'm here in Boston, so yay! <laughs> <laughs> and quickly, I mean, how are you doing? Are you, are you for like our copying vendors? and pasting? No, 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 no it's all being automated. We, we, we sent it out okay. for authority control and said, please put the URIs in. We're, gonna, we're putting okay. all that in right now. Yeah. How, how yeah. Oh, and is that a feature that the vendor is, is it an additional cost, or are they just doing it? We asked them to do it. They did not charge us extra, but those updates. And over time, how are you going to make sure those URIs, like when something is canceled, or a heading is canceled, or changed, or? It's, it's part of the authority service. It's part of their service. Mm -hmm. So they're going to update all the all the headings, and thereby all the URIs are needed. It's only too much. Who's doing it? I know. <laughs> it's backstage, or, oh, or um, it's archive. archive. We're using archive, yeah. All right. I don't mind saying that. I no, there's only two. There's only two. Yeah, you, really, you, can, you can make two like, phone calls and you can find out the yeah, answer. I mean, I, 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 that's the reality that we're moving in, in, to. In, um, to be clear, though, I don't know that the backstage doesn't do that. Yeah. They could. Well, thanks to everybody. I apologize for trying to wrap up two minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christy, um, for bringing right. these questions and right. letting the discussion. Yes, thank you.